Hi everyone. Today we have a very beautiful part of the lecture devoted to magnetic liquids, to ferrofluids. Ferrofluids, uh, if you will type this word into Google, you will find many, many beautiful, nice pictures and videos. You can also order ferrofluids online and play with them at your home place. And principally, they have various applications. You can uh, have a look in the book of Professor Krishnan. He describes it. But one additional application of air fluids that it's used for different kind of demonstrators of magnetism, for example, for pupils and so on. Because it's really nice. You can always have these nice pictures. And let us try to understand what is that. So, uh, ferrofluid is the simplest fine particle system and they combine the normal behavior of liquid, so it's more or less a liquid magnet, with the possibility of controlling their flow and other properties by the application of modest magnetic field. So, this is such a liquid magnet which changes its properties when you apply a magnetic field. Usually, it means that this is just a colloidal dispersion of fine magnetic nanoparticles with a diameter usually around 10 nanometers. Um, and, and with some coating, which we'll discuss a bit later. So, um, in addition, a numerous engineering and commercially successful applications of ferrofluids, which you can check here in Krishna, they also used in biomedicine, imaging diagnostics therapy, and so on. So what we have to take into account. So principally, this is just such a sphere of magnets, 10 nanometer. And with the less what we want to have, we want to have many of the spheres. That's a liquid, so it's, they are mixed in water or in some oil. And, but we want to avoid interaction between these particles. Because uh, only in this case, our ferrofluid will behave like we want to have it. And, what kind of interactions you have to take into account? First of all, it's short range Van der, Van der Waals forces, so they can stick together. And besides, there is long range magnetostatic interparticle interaction. So it means that this is simply dipole dipole interaction. You remember this experiment with arrows. And therefore, they want to avoid that. And one way to do is they protect it. Uh, uh, this particles by electrical charge. So it means that you can charge each particle electrostatically and then since they charge in the same way, they will push away. And then you can uh, at least compensate for the wilds. Or there, are, there is other, which as I understand, commonly used way. It's uh, that you count them with so long chain surfactant molecule. From here, yeah. So such molecule with a length around two nanometers or smaller than the particle, and when you make such a co uh, covering, uh, then they do not stack together. Uh, so why ten nanometer? Because ten nanometer gives you it's good in sense of uh, uh, to avoid this coupling together, so that you don't have here uh, wonder wild sense. Uh, the smaller you will make it, the less problems you will get with, will get with magnetostatic because this uh, dipole fields will be compensated. Therefore, you want to make it as small as possible to get rid of uh, dipole dipole interaction. At the same time, you want to take into account gravity. Uh, therefore, kind of 10 nanometer is more or less such a stable dispersion, which gives you uh, that this. Uh, uh, particles are uniform or more or less distributed within your carrying liquid and it works good. So one of the main effects which we study in uh, magnetofluids is magnetoviscous effect, uh, which is a change in viscosity of ferrofluids with increasing magnetic field. So it has some viscosity and it's, it's like a water and a result magnetic field. And when you apply a magnetic field, it behaves more like honey for example, or maybe even closer to solid state if the field is large. And um, uh, how it can be understood. So the easiest way to understand is that we take one particle and there is such a direction of uh, vorticity. 
So maybe the best way, so if you have this viscose processes, then you can maybe imagine this matter particle and this uh, spheres as a rolling spheres. Yes, yeah, so they kind of rolling, and uh, then you will get uh, such a direction of rotation, and this will give you vorticity. And that's what happens in the um, uh, without application of magnetic field. And as we discussed, usually there is crystallographic anisotropy in the sphere. That means that there is some magnetic moment uh, oriented into some direction with respect to crystallographic structure of this nanoparticle. And when it's rotated without magnetic field, principally nothing happens. It just rotates. But when you apply magnetic field, what happens, we know that magnetic field wants always to put your magnetization along the magnetic moment, like it's shown here. And then what happens, since it cannot anymore rotate so nicely, um, if a magnetic field is applied, as shown, the magnetic moments will tend to rotate and align the particle along the field. The magnetic torque from the external field counters the mechanical torque from the shear flow, causing an increase in its velocity, viscosity. So it means that since it cannot anymore uh, rotate and roll so easily because magnetic field wants, wants to keep it stable, it changes altogether the viscosity of the material. Uh, there is a formula which you can find in Krishna, just such a um, uh, it's probably even, yeah, it's derived on some very basic principles. But what you can hear here, so this is field dependent viscosity. It defines some coefficient. This is viscosity without any applied magnetic field. Then it depends on the fraction. It's v, it's not velocity or something, it's a volume fraction of your uh, magnetic nanoparticles in the total perfluid uh, volume. Then there is alpha, some part depending on alpha and alpha we didn't go so in depth but uh, when discussing Langevin theory there was this alpha introduced it's such parameter which depends it's very comfortable to use it um, it de depends on the magnetic moment of your material on the applied field and on the temperature and these are main parameters that you usually consider when we discuss magnetic properties of materials and then we have here alpha alpha and finally, the last parameter is beta, which is an angle between the uh, vorticity direction and applied magnetic. Uh, but, uh, and then this uh, effect influence of vorticity uh, influence on the uh, viscosity is the maximum. Nevertheless, in uh, the real particles, you have all different beta angles, and you need to kind of summarize all of them. Therefore, if to use this formula, you will get, come to conclusion that vorticity, uh, the viscosity, this application of magnetic field, uh, uh, should change only three percent, two three percent. And in experiment, the real change in viscosity is around fifty percent. So it's much more pronounced in reality than the theoretical model gives you. That's why it, uh, now people understood that uh, what's going on there is this nanoparticles form um, form chains. Such a chain, one is coupled to another, and then of course, if it's not just rolling particles, which stop rolling, but there is instead of having independent particles, you create a chain and then you change it direction, for example. Uh, then of course it influences for this much stronger. So but the message is that there are more complex theories that should be taken into account in order to explain this change in viscosity. But it's sufficient for us. Hey guys, it's Andy here, AKA Mistake. And in this video, I'm going to be messing around with possibly the most amazing yet ridiculously messy stuff known as ferrofluid. Now, I have been known to previously mess around with this stuff in older videos, so if you wish to check them out, I will link them at the end of this one. Also, I don't talk in those videos, so if you're one of those people from the comment section that keep going, hey, this guy's voice is annoying, then yep, you may wish to view those videos instead. So, what is ferrofluid? Well, it's a material that acts like a liquid, but when introduced to a magnetic field, 
It becomes a kind of jellified solid. It's made from ridiculously tiny ferromagnetic particles that are suspended in an oil-like liquid. So, um, yeah, let's get to it. Let's watch the video. So I got a hold of a few of these 10 milliliter tubes of ferrofluid from the internet. This stuff tends to be made from laser ink toner, which contains those magnetic particles. I also found myself a bunch of metal objects ready to be magnetized. Using some old tapes to prop up the plastic dish. Hey, I've been looking for that. I placed the magnet under the dish to secure the first object. The magnet magnetizes the whole metal. I then added the ferrofluid really? using a pipette. Interesting. You can see the ferrofluid follows the path of the magnetic field down the sharp edges of the drill piece. Because strands of magnetic field there are the edges of the fire and the plane point faces. Given the right surface area, this stuff begins to spike up. The spikes occur because the magnetic particles in the ferrofluid are lining up with the magnetic field. Let's try it on some more objects. Pretty darn cool. Actually, internet is full of different types of movies about ferrofluid. This one I selected because it's something which one can do at home. Is there is interest to play with it. The only issue that, as he will say later, that everything will be extremely dirty if you will play with it around, so you should be careful. Nice. As you can see, like I said, this stuff is messy. In fact, it stains just about everything. Better get some white spirit for that. Then finally, I decided to add the ferrofluid directly to the magnet. Might as well just use the whole tube. The ferrofluid gathers at each of the magnetic poles and totally jellifies. It's really slippy. In yeah, fact, there's barely any friction there. Let's see how long it can spin for. Okay, it's um, still going. Okay, well, whilst it's still spinning, here's the links to those other ferrofluid videos. And there we go. So there we have it. The amazing, yet ridiculously messy ferrofluid. I'll see you next time. Okay, so we are done then with this part and in the next lecture we are speaking about magnetization imaging techniques.